Welcome to the deep dive. Today we're uh, getting into something really practical. We're aiming to get a solid handle on the core ideas for the SAP Fiori 3.0 exam. That's the CFIORD 2502. Exactly. So whether you're actually going for that certification or maybe you just want to understand the, you know, the nuts and bolts of SAP Fiori better, we've looked through the official exam info and uh, some typical practice questions. Yeah, to pull out the key stuff. Yeah, yeah. essential insights. Okay, so let's unpack this then. Uh, maybe start with the exam basics. What are the like the vital statistics we need to know? Sure. So the CFIRD 2502 exam, it's got 60 questions and you get 120 minutes. So two hours to do it. Two hours, 60 questions. Okay. Yeah. And the pass mark is set around 68 percent. That works out to uh, roughly 41 correct answers you need. Right. The, the whole thing's in English and it's all multiple choice. But uh, be aware some questions need just one answer. Others might ask you to pick you know, multiple correct options. Okay. Those details feel pretty crucial for anyone prepping. Knowing it's two hours for 60 questions, that immediately makes you think about pacing, right? Like roughly how much time should you plan for each question? Any uh, strategies for managing that time? Yeah, good point. You know, ideally you'd average about two minutes per question, but obviously some will be faster. Some might take a bit longer. Sure. So a pretty common strategy and a good one, I think, is to go through everything once Answer the ones you definitely know. Um, maybe flag the trickier ones. Okay. Then come back to those flagged ones later. It just uh, make sure you don't get stuck early on and you actually bank the points for the ones you do know. That sounds like solid advice. Yeah. Don't get bogged down. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's maybe make this more concrete, digging into some practice questions. Yeah, absolutely. Let's start with um, how you actually navigate around in the Fiori Launchpad. So first question. Which of the following is responsible for interpreting semantic objects and action mappings in the Fiori Launchpad? And the options are A. Target Mapping, B. SAP Gateway Service, C. Fiori Catalog, and D. UI5 Runtime. All right. Looking at those, mm -hmm. maybe we should quickly clarify semantic objects and action mappings, just to make sure we're on the same page. Okay. As I understand it, the semantic object is, well, basically... A business concept, right? Like a sales order or a customer. Mm -hmm. And the action is what you want to do with it, like display or create. Exactly. The verb for the noun, basically. Yeah, kind of. So uh, with that in mind and thinking about how Fiori links things, the answer our sources point to is A, target mapping. But um, why is that the right one? Well, the really key thing to grasp here is that target mapping acts like the the translator, you could say. Okay. Inside the Fiori Launchpad configuration, you define these target mappings, and they specify how a user's intent, which is you know expressed by clicking something representing a semantic object, and an action gets connected to a technical target. Technical target meaning right. the actual app. Yeah, it could be a specific Fiori app or a transaction, maybe even just a URL. So when you click a tile, it's the target mapping that does the work behind the scenes to figure out where you actually need to go. Got it. So if I click a tile saying, I don't know, display customer details. Target mapping is like the stage manager whispering, okay, display action, customer object. That means open this specific app. That's a great analogy, yeah. It bridges that gap between the user-friendly label and the underlying technical component. Connects the click to the code, essentially. Precisely. Now, uh, let's shift gears a bit. Thinking about where all these Fiori bits and pieces actually live, deployment options. Right. So practice question two is about that. In an embedded deployment of SAP Fiori, where are the front end and back end components installed? And the choices. A, on SAP business technology platform, B, on the same SAP system, C, on separate systems, D, only on a front end server. Okay, this one feels a bit more straightforward. The answer is B, on the same SAP system. But what does embedded deployment really mean in practice, like for your system setup? Yeah, so imagine you're keeping everything kind of bundled together within your main SAP system, like your S4 or ECC system. Mm -hmm. In embedded deployment, the front end parts, that's the Fiori launchpad itself, the UI components the user interacts with, and the back end parts. So the SAP gateway for communication, the OData services, the business logic, they are all installed and run on the very same SAP instance. Okay. So it's all in one box, basically, the interface yeah. and the engine. Pretty much. And this can be you know, simpler, especially for maybe smaller companies or less complex setups. The initial configuration might be more streamlined. Right. Less moving parts to connect yeah. initially. Yeah. But I sense a but coming. Mm -hmm. Are there downsides? What are the implications of having it all together like that? Well, yeah, there's always a trade-off, isn't there? Usually. While embedded is simple to start, 
Think about resources. As your system gets bigger, or maybe you start using Fury way more heavily, mm -hmm. having the front end and back end sharing the same system resources can become a performance bottleneck. It's like uh, everyone in a growing office trying to use the same single coffee machine. It works fine at first. It gets crowded fast. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that's why other deployment options exist, like hub deployment, where you deliberately separate the front end server from the back end. That lets them scale independently, maybe have different maintenance schedules, things like that. Okay. That makes total sense. Simpler start with embedded, but potentially less scalable or flexible down the road. Okay. So we've navigated using target mapping. We know where the app might live. How do we check if the app's data connection, the OData service, is actually, well, working? Good question. Leads right into our next one, testing OData services. Question is, which transaction can be used to test an activated OData service in the SAP gateway system? Options, A, ST22, B, SE80, C, IWFNDGW client, D, SMIMM. Hmm, okay. I recognize some of those T codes. ST22 is dumps, SE80 is the workbench, uh, SICM is ICM monitor. Mm -hmm. So process of elimination. And based on the gateway focus, it's got to be C, IWFNDGW client. You got it. C is correct. And the useful thing here is that SAP provides this transaction code, IWFNDGW client, specifically as a like a dedicated test tool for OData services running on the gateway. So it's like a specialized workbench just for those services. What can you actually do in there? How does it help? It essentially lets you act like the Fury app. You can manually build HTTP requests, get requests to fetch data, post requests to create data, put T, delete, etc. Specify parameters, headers, and then send that request directly to your OData service. Oh, okay. Then you see the the exact response from the service, the status code, the headers, and crucially, the data payload itself, usually in XML or JSON format. So you can check if it's giving you the right data structure, the right values, handling errors correctly, all that jazz. Exactly. It's super valuable for developers troubleshooting service issues or for administrators just verifying a service is active and behaving correctly before you even involve the Fiori app takes the UI out of the equation for testing the service itself. Right. Isolates the problem. Very handy. Now. What if things aren't working? And maybe it's not obviously the O data service. Where do we look for broader system issues? That brings us neatly to the next question, focusing on troubleshooting. Which tool provides an overview of the system log for detecting issues in Fiori applications? Choices are A, SM21, B, SAMNL2, C, SEWD, STC01. Okay, NCL2 is for single sign-on. SEW is the gateway service builder. STC01 is for task lists. So again, ASM21, the system log viewer, seems the most likely culprit for general issues. Correct. Again, ASM21 is your direct route into the SAP system log. The system log? Yeah. So it's kind of ominous, like the system's diary of everything that happened. What kind of clues can it give us for Fiori problems? That's not a bad way to think about it. It records a really wide range of system events. Think runtime errors like ABAP dumps, maybe, but also database errors, network communication problems, operating system level messages, significant system warnings. So pretty much anything major going wrong. Yeah, a lot of the critical backend stuff. So if a Fiori app is misbehaving, maybe data isn't loading, a button click leads to an error message, or it's just running super slow. The system log, SM21, is often a key place to look for related backend problems. Right. The Fury app might just be showing the symptom, but the root cause is logged back here. Exactly. You might find an error message in SM21 that points directly to a failed function module call or maybe a database deadlock that occurred right when the user reported the Fiori issue. It helps you connect the dots. I actually recall a time where a Fiori app was just timing out randomly. Turned out, checking SM21 revealed periodic database connection errors that weren't obvious from the app itself. Ah. Uh. Okay, so definitely a critical tool in the troubleshooting arsenal for backend-related Fiori issues. Good to know. All right, last practice question area. Let's talk customization. Making Fiori fit specific needs. Yep. The question is, which method allows you to add custom logic to a standard Fiori controller without modifying the original code? Options. A, direct modification of the controller file. B, use of a JSON model override. C, controller extension using the extension mechanism. D, custom preload.js file injection. Okay, modifying standard code. Now that sounds like a really bad idea generally, right? For updates. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. usually a big no-no. Modifying standard SAP code directly makes upgrades incredibly difficult, sometimes impossible without redoing all your changes. So option A is out. JSON model override is more about data. Preload injection sounds a bit hacky. Hmm. So C, controller extension using the extension mechanism. That sounds like the 
proper SAP way. That's it exactly. C yes. is the correct answer. And this is a really fundamental concept in SAP UA5 development, which, mm -hmm. you know, underpins most Fiori apps. Controller extension. Yeah. So it sounds like we're, what, adding our own bits onto the standard controller. Yeah. How does that work without changing the original? Precisely. SAP UI5 provides a specific uh, framework or mechanism for this. Instead of editing the standard controller.js file, you create a separate custom controller file. In this custom file, you can define new functions, or you can actually override existing functions from the standard controller. You essentially tell the framework, hey, when this standard function is called, run my version instead, or run the standard version, then run my extra bit afterwards. Uh, I see. So you intercept or augment the standard logic. Exactly. And the framework handles hooking your custom code into the standard application flow at runtime. The big advantage is that your custom logic lives separately. When SAP delivers updates to the standard app, your extensions are generally safe and continue to work, or at least are much easier to adapt. That makes total sense. It keeps things clean, maintainable, and upgrade safe. Mm -hmm. It's like adding a well-defined plugin rather than rewriting the core program. That's a perfect analogy. It's definitely the recommended best practice for enhancing standard Fiori app. We hope this deep dive gave you some clarity. Keep exploring SAP Fiori. Whether certification is your goal or just deeper understanding, it's a key part of the SAP landscape. Absolutely. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining us.